I'm Jeff Armstrong and if you like this video please press the subscribe button below to see more videos in my channel. In this video we're going to take a look at the filter options within SharePoint 2016 and the new document library in SharePoint 2016 which we're currently looking at right now. If you're not completely familiar with the new document library check out my channel there's lots of videos about all the new features within the new document library. So filters we're not going to talk about the ordinary front end column filters in this video. We did that in the last video. We're going to pick up and take a look at some of the more advanced filters and the onload filters that are available out of the box in SharePoint 2016. So let's go and take a look at the view here. The modified view for this document here in the settings page and we're going to drop down and if you remember in the last video we manipulated the sort options here to change how the document library organized documents and data when it first loaded so what all the users that have permission to see this view would see when they first load this uh, document library and it's worth remembering that this is a view in document libraries you can have many views so the filters and the sort capabilities that we're going to set up only apply to this view and that's something that maybe we'll talk about uh, in the next video so something else that I wanted to just show you very quickly last time we set these up if we want to clear these what we need to do is just click on this and, and make sure we select this none value. And if we go in and do that none value, what that will do is when this fill with this goes to sort uh, on load, um, it, it will it will sort to none, which which means it really it won't do anything at all, uh, and you'll get the just the generic default view. So what we've come to talk about is these filters. And what's interesting about these filters are that they are far more powerful than the sort. The sort will only organize data. So in the last video we put my, my documents, Jeff Armstrong's documents, above the documents of Jane Johnson and vice versa, depending on what we switch around here with the modified by. But it won't, it's not going to remove data. Whereas what the filter is going to do is it's going to only show data that matches the parameters that we set. So let's let's configure one and then talk about it. By default, we have this uh, option here which says show all items in this view. Now when we select the other option, show items only when the following is true. So here what we can do is we can switch this down and we can say let's have a look at modified by and say when modified by is equal to and what we could do here is we could type in Jeff Armstrong as an example. Now one of the things you need to remember about this is it's absolutely critical that you get the spelling right and this is uh, cap sensitive so you need to make sure that however you type the value in here is exactly as the value is represented in the document library column if you misspell it this won't work so in this example if I type Jeff Armstrong so what we're saying here is only show the documents that are modified where the value of modified is equal to Jeff Armstrong. So let's save that and take a look. So what we get here is all of Jane's documents are removed. None of Jane's documents in the modified column are being shown. Obviously over here you'll see in the created by there is one document created by 
Jane Johnson, which is which is here, and that's because we told it only to filter by the modified column. If we wanted to remove anything that was created by Jane as well. We could do that. So we're going to go back into that settings page. And we're going to say, or where created by is equal to Jeff Armstrong. And let's save that. Now, in this scenario, at this situation, it didn't change and it didn't remove Jane Johnson from the created by. Now, the reason this happened is because we selected the or option. What we actually needed to do is select the and option. And applies to both of these. Um, or option would say either or, so it won't apply both. So we needed the and option in this scenario. And we're going to select OK. And now what we get there is we get that filter. And we now filtered out Jane's op Jane's created by and Jane's modified by. And we only get Jeff Armstrong's modified by in this view. So let's go back and talk about that some more. So what's important here is that if you want to apply the filter to more than one column then you need to use the AND option if you want them to filter both columns by the same value. If you select the OR option what will occur is it will only filter one or the other based on the parameter that you've set. Now what's also interesting here is that we have more options. We can keep going here. We can just keep adding. We can just keep adding filters. So you can filter by as many columns as you need to be. Obviously the more you filter, the more complicated it becomes and the more um, difficult it come, becomes to, to um, handle this in the future. Now there are two other interesting parameters here that you can, that you can put in here. One is me. So instead of writing Jeff Armstrong, what I can write here is me. Now, by doing that, what I'm what I'm telling SharePoint to do is only show me the modified by and created by documents that are modified by me. Now me is an interesting parameter because me is relevant to who I'm logged in as. Right now I'm logged in as Jeff Armstrong. So it will show me Jeff Armstrong's modified by and created by. But if I logged in as Jane Johnson, me would be Jane Johnson. And it would only show Jane Johnson's documents to her. So now what you get is this individualization of the document library by using the parameter me to say only show the relevant modified and created by documents of the person that is currently logged in. Now this gives a huge amount of power when you're trying to individualize different views. So if you wanted everybody to use a document library and they wanted to filter the, all their own documents, you would just set it to me and everybody would only be able to see their specific documents on that document library. Now you'd only be running one document library but each person would have an individualized view without you having to do anything other than setting this parameter to me. And if I if I prove that to you and we just say okay what you're going to see here again is everything has changed back it's still the same. Even though I've taken my name out, it's now filtering based on me and it's based, based on who is logged in. 
And this is incredibly powerful functionality when you start combining it with some of the other features that we've been looking at and as we put them together. So one of the other features that we should look at also, I should say one of the other parameters, is the today parameter. So just as the me parameter sets everything equal to the person viewing this, the today parameter would say let's only show documents that are modified by today and we'll leave this one, we'll set this to none. So we're only going to show modified, we can't show modified by because that's not correct. Modified by is not a date, it is a person so it will fail. But if we set modified, modified is a date and modified is equal to today. So the date is equal to today. So any documents that were modified today, let then show them. And if we save that now, what we should get is just one document. And you see we're in the same we're in the same document library. We haven't moved from this document library, but what we what we're now doing is powerful powerful by default. We're filtering these documents very, very quickly with some very basic functionality. Notice also how the pin to top documents have not filtered. And that's quite interesting. So that's worth noting that anything that you pin to the top of a document li library will not be filtered based on the filter parameters that you're putting in in the view. And if we switch this view to a tiled view, we still get that same rich functionality here, but we get it in a graphical visual format. And you still get the ability to be able to then modify that further should you want to use in these parameters. So hopefully in this video I've shown you how powerful some of the filter capabilities are, how you can set multiple filters and the fact that they run at default when the, when the page initially loads and the fact that you can then start applying them to different views, different people and uh, different times. So hopefully if you enjoyed this video please press the subscribe button, there will be many many more videos. In the next video we're going to start putting some more of this together, we're going to bring this together into more views and bring the sort and filter together to, to create some powerful visual document library views. Thank you very much for watching.